Okay, we're going to start with 7, 8, and 9. Um, we're going over past 3, 4, and 5. We pretty much just talked about that in the intro video. Um, what negative correlation look like, what positive correlation looks like, and what it looks like when there's not really any correlation at all. Um, and we talked about uh, strong and weak correlation. Um, and we can see it when we look at the graph, like this one here. If there were, if there's a good correlation, the line of best fit's really obvious. And for this one, I don't know if I should draw a line this way or this way. Um, it looks like these two guys are uh, almost lines next to each other. And so maybe we could draw a line through there. And these guys would just kind of be on the on the outsides, what we call outliers. So if somebody made us draw a line of best fit, we might draw something like that. Uh, and that looks like maybe, but really the correlation is so weak that um, we couldn't say um, where the line of best fit should be. We couldn't, we couldn't even really venture a guess. So um, there's this thing called the correlation coefficient. And it is just a measure of how strong or weak a correlation is. Um, so the correlation coefficient is r. We call it r. And it's uh, if it's close to 1. So if we say if r is close to positive 1, then you have a strong positive correlation. So you have strong positive correlation. If R is close to negative 1, you have a strong negative correlation. And if R is close to 0, then you have no apparent correlation. Okay, um, and so let's just talk about that. What would R be close to? Um, and I believe they, they're saying, uh, let's use a scale of R will either be 0 or it'll be uh, 1. That'll be really strong. And if it's not quite as strong as a positive 1, we'll go with 0.5. It um, could be 1, or we'll go with 0.5 for not no correlation, but not really strong, just some kind of correlation I can see there. And we'll go in the negative direction as well. 1 and negative 1. 1 is the biggest that R will ever be, and negative 1 is the smallest R will ever be. It'll be between those two numbers. It'll be never 1.2 or 2 or anything like that. The biggest is 1 that you'll ever see. So let's look at this guy here. Was it first positive or negative correlation? Uh, well, it's looks pretty clear to me that it's going in this direction, like the line of best fit would be something like this. So it's definitely a positive correlation. And it it's, you know, stronger than this for sure, but it's not really strong. Uh, but I can definitely see that it's trending this direction um, in a positive direction, the positive slope, but it's not really strong. So I would say R is 0.5. And back here, we'd say r is is close to 0. There's not really any apparent correlation. Here, it's stronger, but not really strong. And it's in the positive direction, so it's positive 0.5. Here, it's quite strong. These data points are really close together, not veering too far off this line of best fit. And so we would say it's a, it's a negative correlation, and it's pretty strong. So we'd say it's closer to negative 1 than, say, negative 0.5. So, R is the correlation coefficient. It's just a measure of how strong that correlation is. And we'll go over how to find R here in a minute. Um, next, I'm going to take number 11. And for number 11, they want us to take this, uh, this data set, plot it, and then just make a guess for the equation of uh, the, the line of best fit. Uh, so, let's get to doing that. Okay, to, uh, 
to do this properly, we're going to want to um, make it a pretty good scale, uh, scaled up uh, so that it takes up a almost all of the space that we've made to uh, to graph it, um, and then we'll take it from there. So here's our x that goes from one to five. So we want to bring it out to here and, and space it pretty evenly um, without making ourselves go crazy over it. That's pretty good. It's spaced out pretty evenly. And then we have data that goes from, let's see, 42 is the smallest, 120 is the biggest. Um, and we can, we can definitely start here, say, at 40. Um, or we could we could have 40 be down here, go up to 120, um, and you know space that out evenly. So if we go to 40 to 120, uh, 60, 70, 80. So so each of these could be 20. So this would be 60, 80. 100 and 120. Um, so at x is 1, y is 120. So that gives us a point right there. And at uh, x is 2, y is 101. So that'll put us right about there. 3 is 87, so that's going to be right around there. Not too far off of there. 4 and 57, close to 60, uh, 5 and 42, so just real close to right there. So now we want to look here and find what line looks like it fits best. Uh, I'm going to start here, go right through like that. That looks pretty good. Um, and so now we need to find the equation of this line, which means we need a couple of points. The way I've drawn it, it looks like it's really close to this point here and this point right here. Um, maybe not exactly, uh, you know, right on. My, my point here, um, originally, this was 2 and 101. Now this point is actually on the red line looks like it might be 2 and 102 or 103. I'm just trying to show you that it, it may not be exactly through the points that you've used. Um, and this one was originally 5 and 42. And this one cuts a little bit below it. So maybe I'll make this 5 and 41. Okay. Um, so we have these two points, and we want to find the equation of the line, and we know with two points from uh, the previous section, we want to find the slope first. So we'll do 41 minus 103 over 5 minus 2. So this will definitely be over 3. And 41 minus 103 is negative 62. Um, okay, so negative 62 thirds is the slope, and we could use the point slope form. I'm going to use this point since it has smaller numbers. We do y minus 41 equals m times uh, x minus 5. Y minus 41 equals negative 62 over 3 times x plus, because we're distributing this negative 62 over 3 through here, so negative 62 over 3 times negative 5 is 310 over 3. And we'll add 41 to both sides. That's 433 over 3. Uh, kind of a messy equation, but there it is nonetheless. So this equation uh, looks like it would be, this equation of this line looks like it would be pretty close to going through these points. And then the second part of this problem is that they want you to find y when x is 20. So 
we just so the the reason for that is uh, we don't have data that goes all the way out to 20 but we can use this line and say well if this this data keeps following this pattern then we can extrapolate out some information about what's going to happen way out here when x is 20 right we can have this box and we can make a guess about what y should be close to when x is 20 um, so when x is 20 what do we get here so I'm just going to use the old calculator here negative 269 that's the exact value that I got so when x is 20 for the equation that I use, that I brought up, and, and the thing about these is that uh, when each of you does these problems on your own, it'll look a little bit different for each of you probably. Because if you drew your line a little bit differently, interpreted where those points were a little bit differently, you're going to get a slightly different outcome. But the you should be somewhere in the region of negative 269. You might be down to negative 280 or somewhere around negative 250 or something like that, but somewhere in this um, this neighborhood is where you should be. If you get positive 1,000, you definitely something is going on. Something's not right. Okay. Now, I'll go on to 19. All right, so I've uh, pasted the table for 19 in here, and we're going to use our calculators for this. And so I have this calculator here that I just downloaded and hope works. So we have to do a few things uh, in order to get our calculators to find the line of best fit. Um, so just really quickly, apparently that makes the calculator go away. Um, we've got data that ranges from, let's see, 4.6, looks like the small 3.9. Oh, sorry, X is from 70, let's see, 74, um, 68, so 55 looks like the smallest, right, and then that's at 3.9, and it looks like it gets bigger from there, um, Oh, wait a sec. 50 is smaller than that. 50 at 3.7, 55 at 3.9, uh, 60. I thought I saw 60. No. Um, this is 58, 55. Now in 68, uh, it goes up to 4.6. And so it looks like we're going to have this positive correlation between these things. Um, so in any case, what we need to do is get this data into the calculator and tell the calculator that we want to find the line of best fit. Uh, so in order to do that, first we have to go in and um, enter this data into the tables. And in order to do that, let's find where the tables are. Sorry, not tables, lists. So list is right here in yellow. So we're going to go to the lists. And we'll start with, well, let's see, we want to, actually what we want to do is we want to go to stat uh, and edit these lists. Okay, so we have list one, list two, list three, list four, list five, all the way through, I think, nine. Okay. So in list one, we're going to put the x's, and in list two, we're going to put the y's. So list one, 78's first, 74's next, 68. You can see this, and I'm just going to pause the video and enter all this in. Okay, so now I've entered everything in. It's really important that you have, uh, you just make sure that um, you didn't add, put in too many uh, data points over here, too many over here, or anything like that. It all lines up. The last uh, x matches up with the last y. Okay, and by default, the 
the calculator is going to assume that you put all your x's in here and your y's in here. x's in list 1, y's in list 2. And now, if we want to calculate uh, the line of best fit, we're going to go back to stat and calculate a linear regression. So it's uh, regression means we, we kind of go backwards. Uh, so we're going to go backwards from this data to a line. Um, uh, that fits that data best, as, cl as close to all the data points as a line can possibly be. Uh, so we're going to find the linear regression. I'm going to press Enter. And it's going to uh, assume that we're using list 1 and list 2. Uh, so you, you want to have put your, your stuff into list 1 and list 2. If you haven't, that's OK. Um, we can tell it that we want to use different lists, but we've used list one and list two, so I'm going to have to use those. Uh, we're going to use list one, comma, list two. Uh, we're going to go second list. We're going to pick the uh, list two, and so we're telling it these are where the x's are coming from. These are where the y's are coming from. It's thinking, okay, and now we have found uh, our linear regression. Now you'll notice that I well I have what I need um, but what's useful is R so um, I'm going to, to show you how to reconfigure your calculator so that it displays R. Okay so uh, sorry I jumped to a different screen. If we want to turn it on so that we f it tells us what R is um, we're going to go second, then to uh, zero, where above zero is actually what we're using as catalog. Um, and we want to go down to the D's. So right here you'll see a green D. It's already uh, looking for a, a number, or not a number, a letter to be input. So D goes down to the D's. We're going to go down, 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 down to diagnostic on. And now it's it's waiting for us to tell it to turn the diagnostic on. We have to hit enter, so we've done that. So now we'll do uh, the linear regression again. And there it is. And now we have r and r squared. So r is what we're looking for, though. r is the important one. r is 0.99. So what that tells us is that we were right in our drawing that we're going to uh, move upward. We're going to have a positive correlation, and it's going to be really strong. It's 0.99. That's really close to 1. 1 would be the strongest possible correlation you could have. Uh, so it's a, a strong positive correlation and the equation uh, we get from from these numbers here, right? It's filling in this A and this B. It's in slope intercept form. So Y equals let's say 0 0.051 times X uh, plus B, which we'll say is 1.138, okay. plus 1.138. So that's our equation of our line of best fit. Go up to the top here. Okay. And that is our last one. Um, so, thanks for watching.